Hello, my oodles and strudels. We're back to review yet another book. Another one. Another one. It never ends. There's too many books, not enough hours in the day, plus there's shows, and there's all these other things, and I don't have enough time. How do people do this while they're working? I don't know. I guess unless you make it your job, but even then. <sighs> anyway. We're going to review book two of Superpowered's, I suppose it's called Superpowered's Year Two. And for those of you who follow the channel might be aware that I already did a review of book one in Drew Hayes, Hayes series, excuse my slip of the tongue, and I uh, fell down pretty hard on it. And I'd like to thank everyone who took the time to leave a comment on that video because it is because of you that I decided to push through uh, into book two. I had left quite a scathing review of book one and to be honest I still stand by it. There's a lot of people who um, disagreed and they disagreed in a really great positive constructive way basically saying all the things that they enjoyed in the book and how things improved later on in the series. And it's because of those people that I really uh, pushed on through. I had stopped, I believe, I think it was two chapters, maybe three chapters before the end of book one, because it was just dragging on. And having done a little bit more research, I kind of understand why now, because it seems that it's a web series. And so now a lot of the things that were really ticking me off about it make a lot of sense, because as a web series, there's a lot more bloat in writing. Uh, Drew was obviously adding in a lot of extraneous details that didn't need to be there, that didn't actually add to the depth of the five main characters. There was a lot of things that were just never addressed. We never really got to know anything about what's happening in the real world. And uh, it, it just kind of flip-flopped into focusing on our characters and then being a teeny bopper story. And that, it just really, really frustrated me. Now, the last, uh, whatever it was, like I said, two or three chapters, you know, I, I saw that the finalization of the last battle, which I still found just really didn't fully showcase this moment that should have been really point of view of Vince finally exploring his, his the full depth or at least more of his powers. We didn't really get to see that. It was just kind of him shooting off stuff and you didn't really get to see his mental emotional state as he was embracing this. And, and then the little twist at the end was a good bit of foreshadowing, but still didn't really leave me wanting. But I decided, let me check out book two. And holy guacamole, folks, thank you for telling me to improve. Because book two has its flaws. There's no such thing as a perfect piece of work. But Hamaya, compared to book one, holy shit, was it better. Pacing. Uh, lack of bloat, just the entire narrative just was brought together much more cohesively. There were moments of, you know, partying and stuff with teens, but that was really cut out to the umpteenth degree comparatively to book one. There was so much more development of the characters. They really were brought along in a way that was more, it was just, it was past cohesive. It was just the flow of it. Drew just really, really improved his writing by the time he got to this, this book. So hats off to him. Uh, our action sequences were much improved. There was a lot more uh, development in terms of each individual character's uh, understanding of themselves and each other. Um, like I said, just a lot of that bloat, a lot of things and details and explanations that never should have been in book one were taken out and we really really we dived much deeper into our training and our improvement of the characters so i really enjoyed it i blew through book two in a day and a half really really quick only had to put it down because of work other than that I, I tore through this this book really really quickly uh the twists at you know how things end off in book two especially with one of our characters nick was just a pfft. You know, figuring out a little bit more of Herschel and Roy's background and what exactly their power is and how those things developed. Seeing more of Vince's history and seeing him develop. Although I would have to say 
Vince to me, even though, and I think this was a lot of my frustration in book one as well, he's kind of focused in on as though he is kind of the primary character out of the five. But in book one, he doesn't really get explored much at all. Not really anything is properly explained of his character. In book two, more is explained, but there's still this kind of glorifying of Vince in the books and even in terms of like saying how good of a person he is, but he doesn't really do much to deserve all this kind of hyping up in terms of his his morality and who he is. People say these things of him, but we don't really see him doing anything, which is unfortunate, even though I still do really enjoy him as a character and he is developed so much better in book two. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see how he's going to develop develop further on. I'm, I'm kind of keeping myself closed off to how many books there are actually in the series. I want to keep it as a surprise. But from what people have said, it seems like there's quite a few books in the series. So it's going to be interesting to see how he jumps up and continues to develop. Uh, Alice, the same thing, is really kind of gets her comeuppance in this. Uh, Mary's still kind of vague in terms of what's happening with her. I don't really know where Drew wants to go with her. Just a quick add-in that I completely forgot to mention is Camille's character who I have a love-hate relationship with this girl I, I understand where Drew was probably trying to come from in this but for me Camille's character comes off as extremely creepy and it kind of ties into the issues I spoke about with people kind of holding Vince up as this like shining pinnacle of beauty like as though he's so incredibly like heroic um, he's a great guy, don't get me wrong, but Camille's character just kind of takes it to this, this obsessive-like level. This is a girl who, small spoiler alert, you know, knew Vince when she was younger. He helped her out one day against some bullies, but they were little children. They were very young. And because of that, she has an infatuation that's, that borders on the range of, of, of like a stalker. She basically is hiding her past from him. And has has built up this entire narrative in her head of her own like lesser self-worth where she has to like take care of him and protect him without him even realizing she's doing this because he's so important to the world. And not only has Vince not done anything to deserve that level of obsession, but it's, it's just so negative. It's basically she doesn't think she's worthy of him and that he's so much better. And don't get me wrong, Drew does a nice kind of development of her character where you see her more and more and more as she spends time with Vince and the others in the, in the group. She starts to push back. There's more of her that comes out. She turns into a little badass. But that kind of focus on protecting Vince without him knowing anything about the fact that they've already met before is just weird. It really does border on the range of a little bit of a creepy, stalkerish kind of obsession with Vince that is never really addressed. It's like her friends know, or at least know to a degree, and Nick knows completely, and Mary knows <laughs> completely, and I don't know. It, it's, or at least, I'm not sure actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm not sure if Mary actually realizes the full extent of Camille's mindset towards him. But it's, it's kind of a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much, and I'm not really a fan of how it's not kind of dealt with in this book now hopefully in book three it does get dealt with and obviously it comes out and then she learns to like obviously deal with this kind of stuff but it's it's a little bit weird just a little bit um one of the i would say faults in this is instead of there being a lot of bloated writing there is kind of this extra time taken in random bits to two three pages here two pages here where random side characters are just suddenly given like a little backstory or we see into their emotional lives, which don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad. There was nothing inherently wrong in things uh, that Drew wrote out, but it was kind of pointless. There was really no point to, you know, finding out this or why this character's thinking this or what this character's doing. It served no purpose to the main narrative. And that's really the central 
Again, I don't even want to call it a flaw in this book. Because, again, it's very possible that the, what Drew is doing is just looking to kind of sneak peek us into what's happening in the wider world. But that's really false. We, we kind of see these random bits of information that don't serve the narrative of the, the five main characters. And don't really serve any purpose to the world. But two books down, and I actually don't know anything about the outside world. Oh, we find out about people involved directly with our five main characters and what they're doing in the outside world little little bit of information but done very well but who are the heroes outside in the world what what is this that we have a bunch of characters who are in a hero certification program to go onto the world that we're told is so dangerous that is so rare for people to actually become full cert fully certified heroes because it's so so dangerous there's so much violence out there nothing we don't even get any blip of who are the modern heroes that are out there fighting right now we don't know a single name we know about people from the past who are retired but we don't know actually anything going out in the world which is a little bit frustrating to me i you know we should have heard something some heroes fighting some villains something not just the people who are directly related to our main characters. Because f for now, it's basically we're in this isolated microcosm of the Lander University. With little bits and pieces of flashbacks that show us a bit about the world, but not really because most of the flashbacks are actually to the other generation at Lander University again. So that, that is a bit frustrating. I don't even want to call it a flaw. I'll take that back. It's just, it's a bit of a frustrating piece of how Drew is deciding to showcase the world and it becomes a little bit more frustrating when he showcases random bits of information of side characters who don't serve really much purpose to the story at this time but yet we still don't know fuck all about what's happening excuse my language drop the f-bomb i still don't know how to bleep things i don't know this is an adult video because i bleeped a word i bleep bleeped so overall Holy guacamole, as I said, thank you all for convincing me to push through and check out book two. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to start reading book three right after this video. I just want to do it before I lost track of all my stuff. I'm going to go a little bit more into spoilers now. Um, I really, really think Nick's development in this book is so great. I found his... His character in book one just annoyed me. He seemed like just so fake and there was no purpose to anything. Figuring out everything about his backstory, well, at least a little bit more of his backstory, finding out about his family, why he is the way he is to a certain degree, uh, and all the things he did, the big twist at the end, just him giving up everything, mostly. Uh, for sure, he's obviously going to come back to some degree because of all the notes and whatnot that supposedly he's taken. But seeing everything he gave up just to push Vince through to the next round was just fantastically done. Just so great. He took something that should have been just this final little bit of training being accepted into the hero course and allowed it to turn into so much more of a huge twist of finding out things about Vince, finding out things about the other characters, adding a little bit of mystery to Professor Pendleton and his connection to everything. So there, were, there was a great amount of groundwork laid here for book three to, to really just take off, uh, which I really love. I mean, seeing Vince get taken by um, Professor George, I forget his last name now. <sighs> Machine dude, robot guy. He is taking George to go see Globe, which is going to be extremely interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how Chad and Vince like deal with their stuff. Are they going to become enemies? Are we going to find out things about Intra that were completely against the narrative? Like what's happening there? That was all really well laid out. And just when I compare this book to book one, it's, it's, it's like two different writers as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I still stand by my shitting on of book one, but uh, book two is great. Got nothing else to say. So check it out. 
if you have read through book one and you're not really sure whether or not you uh, wanted to read book two and you decided to stay through these spoilers, uh, check out book two. It's worth it. Take it from me, who complained a lot about book one. Let me know what you guys think down below. Like, comment, subscribe. The whole sh shindig, shidaddle, shibbity baba. It's so humid here, I'm dying, people. I turned off the fan to do this video. I feel like my soul is soaking out of my pores. It's so hot. So hot. Whew. So, yeah. Check out the website also, geektales.ca. And uh, have yourselves a wonderful evening, day, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm out. I'm out of here. Farewell.